thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm going to shift the focus just a little bit, uh, and um, I know we've ta been talking about uh, cryptographic keys and, um, and silicon, and I'm going to literally elevate the conversation up to the cloud uh, and, and talk about some of the services and what's, what we're seeing in the IoT space from a, from a services perspective. And particularly since this, this session is around smart home and home automation, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, how we see what's happening in the IoT space uh, really transforming this market. So just a little bit of, of background uh, and introduction to Cisco Jasper. Um, so Jasper had been in the space for about 10 years in M2M and IoT prior to the Cisco purchase last year. Uh, we are currently working, um, uh, it's a SaaS-based platform that serves over 9,000 enterprise customers uh, across a whole range of verticals, including obviously in the smart home uh, space, security and home automation. And the way we do this is essentially we partner with mobile operators uh, and we work with them to essentially allow enterprises to connect their devices through the, the network cloud, as it were, and our platform to help them uh, manage their IoT deployment. So what we like to say is we help enterprises launch, manage, and monetize uh, IoT services. And so we've been doing this again with uh, over 9,000 enterprise customers. We're currently hosting um, close to 45 million uh, devices on our platform right now. Uh, we work with about 50 uh, mobile operators around the world and have devices in about 550 uh, networks. Uh, th these are cellular networks uh, globally. So with that, um, what I'll cover today is really try to give our definition of the Internet of Things and particularly how that applies to the security and home automation space. Uh, and I'll talk about some of the uh, examples of, of enterprises that are addressing this market and how they're essentially using that philosophy to, to really uh, take advantage of this phenomenon knows, known as uh, IoT, and then we'll wrap up. So, you know, what, what exactly is the Internet of Things, right? So traditionally we think of it as you take a thing, you add connectivity to it, you connect it to some, some application in the cloud, you have a connected product, and that's primarily what you know, most of us think of, of when we talk about an, an IoT device. What we've seen is that um, there's essentially been sort of this perfect storm brewing where the devices have started getting cheap enough and have gotten cheap enough to the point where they can add the communications modules to them to allow them to connect through a network that's getting a lot more ubiquitous. You think about you know, Bluetooth networks and, and Wi-Fi networks and cellular networks and it's pretty much pervasive, right? So you have a lot more options of connectivity. The devices are getting cheaper and are coming built in with connectivity enabled in it. And then you have this pervasive cloud infrastructure that can essentially make these simple and for the most part, you know, single purpose or even dumb devices smart. And that's really kind of what, what, the, you know, what the current state of the IoT market is and, and we're seeing this pervasiveness of these devices that are, that are now capable of being connected uh, into, the, into the cloud. So you know, connectivity is, is essential but what we, what we think at, uh, at Cisco Jasper is that it's really not about the thing, it's about the services that are being delivered through that thing. And that's really the key point that I'd like to make about IoT is that it's not about, the Internet of Things is not really about things, it's about the services that are enabled when you make, when you make that thing connected and connected as part of a, a larger, smarter infrastructure. So how does that apply to the to the, uh, to the smart home space or, or the residential space. So, you know, we see this transformation of companies going from, again, building things or products to, to building services. And, and this applies both to companies that are building physical products as well as, you know, your traditional service providers. So if you think about this, the, the, 
the residential space, do you have companies that are building products like a thermostat or an HVAC system or a security panel for that home? Um, but you also have companies that have been providing security services. You think of ADT and folks like that who've been providing security services. And our view is that you know, what IoT is enabling them to do is essentially take a point product or a, or a service. So in the case of, and I'll talk about the examples here, in, in the case of a manufacturer building a point product, um, going from essentially selling that point product as a discre discrete product to now being able to connect that product and essentially drive a whole host of, of revenue or, or streams of revenue from that connected product. Similarly, you think about a company that's providing a security service. You think about your ADT, uh, who's providing a single service to you. Occasionally, they might offer you an upgrade to a better package, but that's pretty much the extent of it. It's a very singular transaction that they have with the consumers. And what IoT is en enabling them to do is essentially using that intelligence and that connectivity into the home to offer them a whole host of other services, uh, be it a, um, a smoke detector that now sends a text when it detects you know, smoke in the house or that can now be bundled in with your insurance policy to now lower your insurance rates, um, uh, you know, or, or it could be an appliance that, that you can remotely monitor that's connected with the, uh, your energy supplier so that you essentially turn on those appliances at, at, the, at the time when the, the rates are the lowest. Even going as far as having some of these companies, these traditional products or, or traditional service-oriented companies, now getting into the whole digital lifestyle, you know, allowing you to, you know, the fact that they have a relationship with the homeowner on a, on a singular service or product basis allows them to now expand into other services like, for example, storage, so that you, you're now able to use a secure storage that a security company is providing for you. So again, the point here is that you're going from what IoT, in our view, is, is enabling these, these very product-oriented companies to be is, is to be more service-oriented and use you know, the, the, the constant interaction that they have with their consumers to enable them to, to have a more of an ongoing service relationship. So, so I'll talk about three examples of, of how we see that happening in the, in the smart home space. So you, know, you have companies, traditional companies like Honeywell, again, a multi-billion dollar um, hardware manufacturer that's now moving beyond just hardware manufacturing and providing services based on the, on the products that they sell. You have companies that are reinventing themselves, a company called Vivint, which um, in back in 1999, they started off as an alarm monitoring company and now are essentially marketing a digital lifestyle uh, to their consumers in, in North America. In fact, they have over a million customers' households that are using their services. And then finally, you have the disruptors who have just come out of nowhere and essentially um, are creating this ecosystem uh, around their products uh, to build uh, you know, these sort of complex compound services that, uh, that, that makes the, you know, the, um, the lives of, of consumers better. So let's, let's dig into each one of these in a little bit more detail. So in the case of Honeywell, this is a company that produces, in the, in the, again, in the home space, you know, a lot of HVAC-related systems or security-related uh, products such as um, uh, thermostats and, and uh, security panels. And what they've, uh, what they've transformed themselves in, into by connecting these products is, is providing a connected you know, comfort and security service to their consumers. So from a, cu from a customer's point of view, you know, it's a recognized brand. Uh, they see the thermostats and they see the, the, the security panels and now Honeywell is backing that up with, you know, with services that, um, that are connected with those products and it creates a much more um, of a, uh, an engaged relationship between this hardware manufacturer and the consumers. And of course for, he for Honeywell, you know, this is key to them. They're, they're trying to move away from hardware and, and get into the more service-centric business model and it, it allows them to do that. The other example, again, is Vivint. Uh, this is a company back in 99, as I said, uh, started off with alarm monitoring. 
and they have evolved. They recently bought, back uh, in 2014, they, they actually bought a uh, cloud storage company called Space Monkey, and they are now offering, in addition to a lot of the security and home automation services that they can provide through these connected uh, products in the home, they're essentially also providing a connected uh, storage drive that basically connects into the cloud so that not only can you protect your home, but you can now connect, protect your digital assets in the home by trusting, again, this, this trusted service provider that's providing your home security to also secure your digital assets. So again, a uh, very innovative way for these companies to exploit IO the, the phenomena of IoT to move beyond a, a singular solution, alarm monitoring, to a whole plethora of, of, of digital life solutions, including, in this case, uh, online you know, photo storage and sharing and media uh, storage. And then, of course, you have companies like Nest uh, that are totally disrupting this market where uh, they are essentially creating uh, an ecosystem of partners where, in this case, Nest partners with leading insurance companies, including American Family and Liberty Mutual, so that um, from your insurance company, you essentially get a smoke detector or a, um, a thermostat or, 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 or a camera, for example, for free. And uh, as, as part of the, the offering, um, the, the insurance company can make sure that those products are connected and working well you know, at which point they give you a 5% discount on your insurance premium. So, you know, it, it, the, the home is protected, so your insurance premiums go down um, based on that. Again, so it's a very innovative way for a, a product company like Nest to essentially uh, create a service ecosystem around its product by, again, using IoT. So I just want to wrap up with this, this additional um, area where we see this happening more. Again, in this case, where Nest is partnered with Mercedes uh, to essentially allow uh, you know, the Mercedes owner to link their smart car with their smart home so that you know, once the car is within a geofenced, you know, geofenced area, uh, it automatically prepares the home for the arrival. So turning on the lights, maybe shutting down uh, the alarm system, uh, and uh, you know, um, you know, making sure that the, the, the temperature is, is, is uh, to the, the liking of the consumer, uh, and, and essentially be able to provide these additional aggregated services through these connected products. So with that, um, I will stop here, and, and uh, if, I have any, if you have any questions, I could, uh, I could take those. We have time for a few questions. <laughs> Not even like, you know, how do you, are we giving away a free Mercedes? <laughs> Yeah, so so this is a this is a um, you know a key challenge for this market. Um, you have these standards being fought in, in essentially when you look at the overall IoT spectrum, you see it being fought in, in two different areas. One is within the home itself. So you have companies like Qualcomm with their um, with their all seen uh, protocol where they basically allow devices to talk amongst each other. You have Google Nest. Uh, at Google in general that has their own protocols. Apple has its home kit. So, you know, Samsung, again, another uh, giant. Um, so these are, these are battles that are going to take place, right? Um, and I, I think that there's not going to be a clear, you know, standard or winner. I think that at some point these, these standards will start talking with each other. Um, and, you know, right now they're trying to get as much of the market share as possible. So I think that that's clearly something that's happening in the home. And, um, and from, from our perspective, you know, we sit in the cloud, we let those battles be fought out within, you know, within the, the home environment. 
The, on the other end, on the cloud side, I think you know, certainly there are similar battles, if you will, that are going on there, right? Um, but I think in the, in the cloud space, it's a little bit more uh, straightforward in the sense that the internet has provided a model for us for interoperability, right? So if you think about all the internet, internet strand standards, I even including things like IP protocols, right? Or web services protocols, RESTful APIs, et cetera. If you, if you look at all of these different things that have already happened in the IoT, in the, in the internet space, um, you know, you see the same things now being adopted in the IoT space. So I think on the cloud side, I think those, those are less contentious battles. Certainly in the consumer home side, I think those battles are going to be fought out um, in the, over the next few years. And I, as I said, I think it's not going to be a single standard, but rather, you know, Apple's going to have to talk with the Googles and the Googles are going to have to talk with the Samsungs in order for this to be a viable uh, market. So um, that's a little bit of a hard question to answer, but let me, let me give it a shot. So I think that um, certainly the consumer space, which is where the smart home, home automation, and even the healthcare space would fall into that, has a much broader, um, you know, it has, has uh, a much bigger potential for generating overall revenues um, because just because you know, if you think about it, you know, on the average, you know, each person has anywhere between five to ten devices that are that are attached to them. So you think about, you know, five or seven, six, seven billion people in the world. Immediately, you're talking about anywhere between thirty to, to seventy billion devices that are associated with that person, right? So, so it's a very rich environment to be able to monetize it, and it includes again healthcare where. You're starting to see a lot of remote patient monitoring applications for home healthcare types of solutions kind of blend in with the smart home types of, of applications. You know, oil and gas, obviously, you know, it's a very huge industry, um, uh, you know, but I think that if I were to lay my bets, I think the, the consumer and healthcare space overall is probably going to be a much bigger market as an aggregate. Now, if you're an individual provider, then you obviously pick and choose where you play and, and do that. So. Other questions? All right, well, thank you for your time. Thanks, Sandra.